Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you. We are working on this old Williams F14 Tomcat pinball machine from 1987 and this thing has seen better days. It's pretty rough. So we did a video when we got it in of the condition that it was in and the thing actually still boots up but you can't play it. The solenoids don't work. Um, about half of the bulbs don't work. Half of the displays don't work. And it's just pretty rough overall, but we're going to bring it back. So uh, stay tuned if you like saying, seeing things turn back the hands of time. <laughs> so the first thing that I'm going to do to it, like I mentioned, we already did a video where we kind of showed the condition that it was in whenever we got it. The first thing that I'm going to do to it is when you have a big mess like this, so you got a machine that just got all kinds of problems, you can't start like, you know, the, so the, the you might be tempted to, oh, let's just clean the play field and work on that. Well, it don't even work. You know, let's get it where electronically it works properly first. So the first thing I'm going to do is start on the electronics. And the way we tackle that whenever you have a big project like this is you need to cut it down into bite-sized problems, people. Bite-sized problems. There's a thousand things wrong with this thing, but if you think about it like that, it'll overwhelm you. So you need to break it down into the smallest pieces you can and then slowly work through those, okay? So the way I start is at the wall. The power comes in, goes into the cabinet, and then pretty much the first thing it does is it gets up here to the power supply. So we're going to uh, work on the power supply first. Now the thing is up and running, so the power supply is working, but you hear all the hum and the speakers and everything, and that may be a power supply problem. That may be a problem over here on the on the motherboard and all that. But it's a thing where you don't want to work on the MPU if you haven't made sure that the power supply is good. You know what I mean? You don't want to go mess with the soundboard if you don't know that the MPU is, is good. So we like to do them in order, kind of the way the power flows through the machine. So the first thing that you need to get right is your power supply. So uh, I'm going to turn it off and then we will unplug this sucker and put it on the bench and see what's going on. Now, a couple things about it. One, it doesn't have all of the burnt wiring that these often have. So these general illumination connectors often are all burnt up. This one isn't though, for whatever reason. So that's good. And then two, someone has soldered a couple wires to it. So there is a black wire soldered there and there is a red wire soldered up there. I have no clue what those go to. Shouldn't be like that, and it ain't going to be like that when I'm done with it. So, the very first thing I'm going to do is look and see where those wires go and what in the world they were trying to do with that. Um, so, once we figure that out, we can cut them loose, fix whatever that problem is, and then we'll be able to remove the uh, power supply, which just screws in and uh, everything unplugs. General Yegoff is yelling at me. We're coming to get. We're coming to get you, General Yegoff. I know I can't get you yet, but I will soon. Um, so let's see where those two wires go. They run down underneath into the playfield area, it appears. So I'll see, uh, I'll see what it looks like underneath there. Big mess underneath the playfield, but look what I have here. A black and a red wire that someone has added. These are connected to the power supply. And if we get those loose, maybe we can figure out what in the world. I guess that's just all that made the wire too long, I guess. Runs over to here. <laughs> okay. Uh... is in that loom as well. Okay. What in the hell were they trying to do? We have duct tape on the coin door. Boy, it's old duct tape too. Nice.
you just run into stuff like this, people. It's not the end of the world or anything. It just, it is what it is. Let me make sure that's the same ones. Yep. So it's this, how in the world? What in the world? It could be that one. You wouldn't think it would be in that loom, though. Hmm, it's very strange. You see it runs into the, okay, the black one circles around to here. It's plugged into this meter, coin meter that they've added. Okay. Okay, so let me think. So they've got a ground and a It's just set up so they can make a coin meter work. Hmm. The red wire that's attached to one of the voltages on the back runs up into here and then I suppose They've got it hacked into the coin system somehow so that it can make this coin meter work. The reason for that is because the the, uh, the machines didn't have a physical coin meter. It was a it was a software thing where it kept track of it in the software. So someone was has went to a lot of trouble to add that coin meter. That's crazy. Okay, so we're we're going to cut the two wires loose. I'm never going to attach them back. It will never go back on there. I don't want the coin meter, the physical coin meter to work. I don't think that helps anybody. And this uh, this machine is going to be in home use anyway, so the software accounting ought to be just enough for home use, you know. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so I'll cut those off the power supply, and then I'll remove it and put it on the bench, and we'll take a look at it and uh, see what kind of con condition it's in all, all over. So here's the power supply. It's actually very clean. Like I said, usually the general illuminations all burn up this connector. This one, not at all. Doesn't seem to be anything at all wrong with it. Uh, the wires that they attach, this one is on ground. It's on test point two, which is ground, which is weird because you could have grabbed ground anywhere. And then this one is the five volt. So they <laughs> grabbed five volts off of it to run the meter. I thought the meters were 12 volt meters, but maybe that's a five volt one. Um, so yeah, we're just going to get rid of those two jumpers. I mean, those two lines. And at one point, it looks like they had the the ground connected here to the 12 volt, or there was some kind of wire connected to the 12 volt. We're getting rid of all of that. So we're going to uh, rebuild this a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflow all the connectors. Um, so just the pins on the back. Sometimes we'll get cold solder joints. I don't see any obvious ones on this one. But when you remove the connectors, it flexes the pins a little bit, and especially the ones on the end will actually break away from the solder. Um, it causes you lots of problems. None of these have any obvious ones that I can see, but just for preventative maintenance, I'm going to do that. So let me do that first, and I'll show you how that looks. All right, new solder on all of the pins for the connectors. That's kind of a must because that's a that's a big problem, cold solder joints. But it doesn't really cost you anything. So if you're working on one of these for yourself, I'm trying to show you how to fix it starting at the beginning, you know? So that's one that you definitely have to do. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm, I'm going to do, just because I it's easy for me to do, is I'm going to replace um, these three capacitors because I just happen to have those we keep capacitors in stock um, now it looks like those may have already been replaced Let's see if I can tell Ooh, I can't really tell by the solder joint but possibly so I replaced this capacitor this capacitor this capacitor and this capacitor usually those aren't really even 
absolutely necessary. It's not an emergency thing. You know, they're really cheap and simple to replace though, so you might as well do it if you're going to do it. But the one that's very important is this one, this big one. So this is the uh, five volt filter capacitor. So the, the five volts that every board runs on is filtered by this. Um, so when these get old, they start drifting and uh, letting a little ripple through on the line or your five volt will be too low or whatever. So uh, th it's a good idea to replace this one. So you can buy these new on eBay, um, several places you can get them. So I'm going to swap that out. And I've actually got the right one that's uh, axial instead of radial. I always have the wrong ones for like these, for instance. Uh, so I'm going to swap that out. Uh, if you're looking for uh, parts, there's a few good places you can get stuff. So Great Plains Electronics is a really cool, cool place. GreatPlainsElectronics.com um, does a lot of uh, pinball-related stuff. There's a place called Big Daddy Enterprises. <laughs> that does a lot of pinball stuff. They're cool. Um, and then the typical places like the Pinball Resource, pbresource.com. Love them. Uh, Marco Specialties is near us here in South Carolina. Uh, they That's probably the most... Uh, that that place probably has more stuff than anybody um, as far as one, one place that just having a, a big variety of pinball-related things. Um, but components, I would probably go with... Um, um, Great Plains Electronics, if it's if you can if they have what you need at least. I don't know if they sell these or not. Um, and then uh, if you, if you're looking for specific stuff like uh, or not specific stuff but generic stuff like some of the tools we use and things like that, you can check it out on our website. We don't really sell anything, but there's a bunch of links there on our parts page. Just go to lionsarcade.com. Up at the top, there is a place. Uh, there's a link to parts, and we've got a lot of the tools and stuff that we. Um, uh, use or our t-shirts and our coffee mugs with our logo and stuff like that on it you go check all that out if you buy any of the stuff that there's a link to it sends you to amazon and we get a little tip for whatever you bought on amazon after you click one of those links so uh, but i'm going to swap this one out and then we've got to look at the uh the high voltage i need to see what this one is for too my problem with this one is i don't have a radial one all i've got is I mean, I don't have an axial one. All I have is radial ones. Uh, so I could swap it, but it's going to be kind of ugly. Oh, wait a minute. Mm, yeah, I can't do it like that. Okay, so uh, let me swap that one, and then uh, uh, we're going to look at the high voltage section. Okay, so we got our new capacitor in and put a little zip tie on it. There's holes in the board for that. This one, I was, I was trying to remember how I usually do this one. If you look, the positive lead can go, it can either be an axial or there's one right there too where you can put a, a radial in if you want. So that leaves us with the two capacitors for the displays and then we need to think about bullet, not bulletproofing. I, I don't really like that phrase, bulletproofing. <laughs> Uh, um, preventative maintenance on the high voltage. So the display is actually working. Um, you may have noticed like half of the display is not working, like the two top displays, but the two bottom are. The way it works is it uses a negative 100 volts and a positive 100 volts to make everything work, but each display needs both of those. So the power supply is fine if you're getting any kind of anything on the display. Um, the, the reason that those top two are out is going to be uh, because of the uh, um, alkaline damage from the batteries on the CPU or because the display itself has problems. Uh, it's not the power supply. So this, this power supply is working just fine. But what we want to do is, is replace a couple of the things that fail often on it so that hopefully we'll catch it before it fails. Uh, so one of the things is these little resistors here, or these big resistors here. These are 39K uh, ohm resistors, 39,000 ohm resistors. These, these uh, just take so much, uh, I don't know the best way to put it. You get so much heat going through them, so much, they're used so much that they start drifting after a while. So they will change their value. Sometimes you can measure them and they'll be fine, but then once they warm up a little bit, they change their value. So it's a good idea to replace these uh, 39K resistors with one watt flame-proof resistors. 
Okay. Uh, and then these these two little diodes here are one in forty seven sixty four diodes, and that's what actually uh, regulates it to a hundred volts and negative one hundred volts. So it's one in forty seven sixty four. So what some people do is they will replace these with one in forty seven sixty threes. So they're 4764s. Some people will put 4763s because it, what that does is it lowers the voltage to 91 volts instead of 100 and it makes it negative 91 instead of negative 100. So th that means you have less voltage going through your displays. It makes them last a little longer. The only problem though is if you have a display that's borderline, it's already starting to wiggle and there's pieces of it missing and uh, because it's outgassing. <laughs> Um, if the voltage is lower, it may make it where the, the display won't even light up anymore. So uh, it's kind of half in one, half in the other. If you do an LED upgrade, you don't need any of this. So this area can be broken and um, the LED um, displays will still work. So, you know, it's kind of just depends on where you want to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these two resistors. And I'm going to replace these two diodes. I'm going to use one in 4760, uh, 4763, I believe I do have, uh, yeah, I see them up there. Um, I'm going to use the, the, the 91 volt ones, the, 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 uh, I hate to call it an upgrade because there's, you know, the one in 4763s. I'm going to use those and I'm going to replace these two resistors. And then I'm going to leave the rest of it because it's everything's working. But these are known to drift, and whenever they drift, they blow these diodes. So the the diodes uh, start getting a little shaky, <laughs> and these resistors start getting a little shaky. So by replacing those, hopefully we'll make it where uh, down the road we don't have any problems. These capacitors, I believe, have already been changed. I don't think those are the original ones. They look pretty nice. So I think somebody's already worked on that area. So I'm going to leave those. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, another thing you want to do is, of course, check your f fuses to make sure they're the right, uh, the right um, amperage. So we'll check that too. But let me let me replace those resistors and, di and diodes, and then we'll come back and check it out. Okay, so we replaced those. I mounted them a little high off the board just because heat's an issue on these, you know. Uh, and then the the fuses these were fine the quarter amp that's for the displays was a one amp So I made it a quarter amp uh, This one was correct. Uh, this one was a five instead of a four and this one was correct So we're going to pop it back in and see if everything still works Keep your fingers crossed I, mine don't really cross that well look let me see if I can Keep your fingers crossed Okay, we're going to check some voltages on it. I've got the I've got her turned on, so we're very carefully going to check some voltages. You can get a ground from like the back plane, or you can just touch one of the screws, is what I usually do. And uh, I've got the inputs plugged in. This is the general illumination, but I've got the inputs plugged in, but I don't have the outputs plugged in because if like the five volts is off, you don't want to send. Like I may have this screwed up where it's sending out eight volts or something. Well, I don't want to send it over to the boards. I want to keep it on the power supply until we confirm that it's the right voltage. Uh, so, uh, we're at 5.01 volts DC. Boy, thick. And the, the harder one to do is the, uh, the high voltage for the displays because you've got pins here right next to each other. Okay, so what I did was I just put a little uh, empty Molex connector on it. Because that way, I can't accidentally short to the pin next to it or something. Five volts, like it's supposed to be, I think that was the key. 100.5 volt. Negative 103.5 volts. So you see that's a little bit off. Um, but you're talking... It's 3% off. Ah, that's pretty close. Those resistors are probably 5% resistors. So if it's within 5%, they consider that good to go, right? So the tolerance is pretty close. Um, 
And you know, the, I, I put the, uh, hmm, that's interesting. I put the 91 volt diodes in it, but I guess since we're getting more uh, voltage from the transformer, it's higher, but whatever. So, so basically, wall voltage has went up over the years. So if you're not getting 110 volts out of the wall, the volts out of your transformer will rise too. So if it's, uh, uh, like I'm getting 120 out of the wall here, so if everything is like, you know, 9% higher than it was. So instead of 91 volts and negative 91 volts, we're at 100 and 103. Uh, Good thing I put those in. If I would have put the 100 volt ones in, it probably would have been much higher. Okay, but uh, that's with intolerance. So I think we're good to go. Uh, the 5 volts is right. The, the display voltage is right. So I'm going to very carefully, you know, turn it off, plug everything back in, and see if we're where we were. Hopefully uh, we haven't made anything worse yet. It seems to be back up and running. Now you die! The displays are doing what they were doing before. Just barely limping along. Okay, so uh, if you didn't see the first video, the reason that the displays don't look very well is because there's some pretty bad battery damage. Not crazy, crazy bad, but it's leaking all over all that crap. Uh, and this is the display connector right here, so... We're going to have to do some extensive rework. Extensive rework on that main PCB. So join us next time when we'll get right on that. We also have to, uh, since we're doing power supply stuff, eventually we're going to have to put fuses in these lines here. See these two uh, bridge to, uh, rectifiers? If you... Uh, if you don't fuse those lines that, that feed those, so there's two AC lines that come in and then the DC lines that come out of both, if you don't put a fuse um, on the, you have to cut one of the red lines and put an eight amp fuse in it, and you have to cut uh, one of the blue lines and put an eight amp fuse in it. If you don't do that, if those bridges ever short and go bad, they catch the, the uh, wires on fire. We actually had one do that on one of our videos one time. So uh, since we're doing power supplies, I should mention that we'll do that. I'm just not going to do it tonight, but we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it in a later video whenever we start buttoning up things. Uh, but yeah, next time we're going to have to do some of this repair on this stuff. Ugh. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. It didn't fix anything, really, but at least now we know that our power supply is within spec. All of the numbers are right there where they need to be. This is where I got what the uh, fuses were supposed to be. I actually put a little legend on the back of the, the door here. It's slightly different on some of them. Some of them will have... You see how this one has had a little piece of paper stuck over it? It's because those change depending on what's in the game, which title it is. So there you go. So we appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Like I said, leave your comments below. Give us an odd number of thumbs up. <laughs> and we'll catch you on the next one. Make sure to check out our brother channel, My Brother Donnie. He's literally my brother. Uh, and he and I are have lately been working on a, uh, a an old building that we bought. So if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you might uh, like watching us work on old buildings. So go check that out. The name of the channel is My Brother Donnie here on YouTube. The link's down below. So. We'll see you on the next one.